What's going on everybody, my name is Monitori, coach of the Tampa Bay Lux Rays, and today I'm bringing you guys week 2 of the PPL Division 2. Now if you guys don't know what the PPL is or the PPL D2, please check out the description below. There will be a link to the PPL YouTube as well as the PPL Twitter. And also in the description you will find a link to my opponent, Juanchito Marvel, coach of the Amityville Haunters. Uh, his, well, like I said, all his information will be in the description below. So, uh, this match. Uh, I Again, I had an entire team builder dedicated to this uh, match go up yesterday, but just for a quick rundown, we have our physically defensive Nido Queen, we have our specially defensive Zapdos, we have our Mega Lopunny, we have our Taunt Jellison, we have our Combine Reuniclus, and we have our Scarf Tyranitar. As you guys can see, Juan brought his Vaporeon, Latias, Mega Tyranitar, Infernape, Togetic, and Tornado Styrian. So, looking at his team, it looks like uh, Jelson is going to put in a lot of work. It switches in nicely to the Infernape, and uh, with Taunt, I can shut down the Vaporeon as well as the Togetic. Uh, he did bring the Latias, so uh, Tyranitar is going to be very useful to potentially pursue trap that. And he did not bring Raichu, so he does not have Electric Immunity. I can freely Wolf Switch around. He has three weaknesses, one resistance being the Latias, which, again, I trap with my Tyranitar. So, so we're going to start off the match. Um, there's one. I'm going to get my cursor out of the way. I apologize. Uh, so I'm going to lead with Nidoqueen, trying to get my rocks up as soon as possible, as he actually ends up leading with his Tornadus. Now, I know I can take any hit from this thing, but I don't want to take, like, a Life Orb Psychic or something. So I switch right out into my Specially Defensive Zapdos, which is built to easily take this thing on. And as you guys see, he does just go right for the Psychic, and I take this, like, it's absolutely no problem. Zapdos is extremely bulky. And here, I pretty much just get a free Volt Switch. Like I said, he has no electric immunity. There's no way he's going to want to stay in. So he's just going to go for the U-turn. Uh, again, dealing very little damage to my Zapdos. And as you'll see in a second, he is going to send out his Guinevere, the Latias, which is perfect. I'll get a Volt Switch off on this thing. I can pursue Trap it with Tyranitar. Everything's going to be good. So I go for the Volt Switch, and it doesn't really do all that ma much damage, uh, leading me to believe it has some HP investment. Not a ton, because Zapdos is uninvested, and that is a resistant hit on a lot of ass, but I'm going to send in my Tyranitar, and uh, going to get the Sand up, and you guys will see in a second. Uh, this Sand damage here is actually pretty important, so that's going to happen. He stays in and has the Colbert Berry, uh, which was very good on Wands part. I think he was predicting this type of situation. And he is able to hit me with a Hidden Power Fighting. Now, thankfully, because Tyranitar is ridiculously bulky, I am going to take that relatively well. And this, in combination, uh, the two Sand Hits, in, in combination with the first Pursuit and this Pursuit, is going to be enough to knock out the Latias, even though he did not switch out. So that is perfect. Tyranitar, you're doing your job perfectly. Now, uh, Juan's going to send out his Infernape. I'm not sure what type of Infernape this is yet. He knows I'm locked into Pursuit at this point. He can go for pretty much anything. I'm going to hard switch out into my physically defensive Jelson as he just goes for the U-turn. And just judging by this damage here, I can confirm that he's not banded uh, just because the U-turn would have done a little bit more, but uh, not 100% sure this item. I'm thinking Scarf because U-turn is typically on used on Scarf sets, but I'm not entirely positive yet. It could be E-Belt. Um... So he is going to go for that. Uh, he sends in his Tornado Therian here, and even though I can take any hit, like I can take a Hurricane, fine. I can take a knockoff, just fine. I don't really want to lose my leftovers of this thing, and I can't really do too much to this thing. I can Scald, potentially get a burn, I can Toxic it, but I feel like my better play is just to go out into my Zapdos. He can take any hit this thing wants to go for. He does go for the knockoff, weakening my Zapdos a little bit. I was thinking about going for the Roost here, but I realized... I can get a free roost against a lot of other things anyway, so I'm just going to keep up my offensive momentum. Just click Volt Switch on this thing. Anything that comes in will not appreciate it, and he is actually kind of forced out into his Tyranitar at this point. With the Sand, he will be able to take this Volt Switch very well. Um, but again, I am gaining the offensive momentum here. So here, I take this as an opportunity to go out into my Nido Queen and set up my Stealth Rock. So I was thinking about going Mega Low Bunny. Uh, just to threaten this thing out, but he has a couple switch-ins to it. So I just go out into my Nido Queen. I expect him to switch out, because I'm a Nido Queen, and I didn't think he'd want to stay in. Uh, but he does actually stay in. Go through the Mega Evolution. You're going to see here in a second, I outspeed, showing me that he's likely uninvested. Um, so I am going to go... <coughs> I am going to set up my Stealth Rocks, as he just goes for the Earthquake. And this damage reveals that he is an Adamant Tyranitar. If you were Jolly... Uh, the Black Flood recovery would have made it so that I would not be too a KO'd, but 
He is an Adamant Tyranitar. I am gonna go for another, I'm going to go for my Earthquake here, and I do score a crit. It's not huge, because it would have gotten a good amount of damage off on it anyway, and I can wear the Tyranitar down anyway, but it does make it more difficult for him to potentially pass a wish into it with my Vaporeon, or with his Vaporeon, so that is unfortunate. Now I am going to go out into my low punny, and I have no reason to not click return. It will kill this uh, Tyranitar at this point. So I do go for that return, and I really thought, like I know I'm jolly, and this is a Togetic, and I know how bulky Togetic can be, but I really thought after Stealth Rocks this would do a KO. Uh, I didn't really need to calculate, because again, return is just my best play in general. So I go for the return here, and as you'll see, the return damage in combination with the sand is not actually a guaranteed uh, to a KO on this Togetic, and I really do not want my low punny getting hit with a Dazzling Gleam or getting paralyzed by a T-Wave, so I'm kind of forced to switch out here. And I do decide to go right out into my Zapdos at this point. Uh, as he actually just get, goes for the uh, Roost wanting to keep this thing healthy so he can switch into my low punny. Uh, so that's a good plan on his part. Uh, again, he doesn't really have a super great switch into this, so I am just going to, well, I'm just going to go for the Roost, uh, again, got to keep my Zapdos healthy to switch into that Tornadus a little bit better. Uh, he goes for the Defog, so Nidoqueen didn't really do all that much this week, uh, although it did get the damage off on the Tyranitar, which is huge, because, again, uh, as soon as that Tyranitar is gone, my Reuniclus is going to have a fun time. So here, he's kind of forced to switch out. He goes out into his Solve Vest Tornadus to take the Volt Switch, which it actually does relatively well. Again, I am an uninvested Zapdos. Tornadus is very bulky with the Assault Vest, so not a terrible switch on his part. He can switch out, get Regenerator. I go out into my Mega Lopunny once again. I know he's not Scarf because we saw him change up moves earlier, so I am just going to go for the return here as he sends out his... Actually, no. I believe I click Fake Out because I wanted to, um, want to make sure I could kill in case he was like a physically defensive set, kinda. Um, my return was probably my best play, but it's not a huge deal. I do have safe switch into the Vaporeon, so I'm going to switch out into my Reuniclus. It's the best thing I have to take a Scald if I, well, aside from my Jellison. If I do get burned, no big deal because I'm a Magic Guard. Uh, does not get the burn, does a decent amount of damage to me. Again, not a huge deal. Here, I try and, uh, I try and pull a, uh, I try and get a cheeky little kill and just go for the Focus Blast, hoping he'd go out into Tyranitar, but. Uh, Juan does just go for Protect there, trying to scout what I would do. Um, and at this point, I do just go for the recovery here. I didn't know what he was going to do, didn't know if he was going to roar me out. If he went into Tyranitar now, I wanted to be at a good amount of health. Actually, no, I click Psy Shock. Uh, I click Psy Shock, expecting not the Tyranitar to come in, so I do go for that. Here, I know he's going to want a U-turn, because the switch in his Zapdos is very obvious, and he's already knocked off my item, so I figure he's going to want to go for the U-turn. So at this point, I do just click Recover on this thing. Uh, it is probably my best play. I want the three units healthy. With the Culver Berry, I can take an Adamant Crunch from Tyranitar, almost no problem, as he decides to go out into his Togetic. Now here, he is going to go for a Dazzling Gleam as I, at well, he crits me, as I decide to go for the Comp Mine. Now, this is not, uh, I'm basically trying to force him out into the Tyranitar at this point. Like, if I can catch the Tyranitar on a switch and go for the Focus Blast and get rid of it, I have the potential to sweep his entire team with my Reuniclus. However, he's going to go out into his Vaporeon. I missed the Focus Blast, not a huge deal, and he's going to reveal the Haze. So, now I have two things to get rid of before I can set up with Reuniclus. I, can, I have to get rid of the Vaporeon, and I have to get rid of the Tyranitar. So, uh, and I don't necessarily need to get rid of the Tyranitar now. Focus Blast will definitely kill, and I can take Crunch with the Culverberry. Just kind of want to make sure that I don't miss my Focus Blast by just getting rid of it immediately. But anyway, I'm going to hard switch out into my gels, and uh, this Vaporeon has revealed only Scald at this point. I'm not entirely sure what it's going to go for. He does reveal the Protect, however, which pretty much guarantees that he's going to have Wish. I figured he'd have Wish. That's usually what Vaporeon does, but it does reveal the Protect. And here, I expect him to want to stay in, potentially go for a, a Wish or whatever, so I do just go for the Toxic. Uh, but he actually switches out into his Tornado Slarian, which is totally fine. Uh, wearing this thing down is going to be very important as well, and that Toxic will come back to play a little bit later. Here I am going to switch out into my Zapdos once again. Again, I don't want to get knocked off. I don't want to have to take like, a random Dark Pulse, even though I can. I don't really want to. He actually just goes through the Psychic here. Not entirely sure what he was predicting, but not a huge deal. Zapdos does take it just fine. 
as uh, he does get also a useless Fidef drop. Uh, again, it doesn't really matter. At this point, I do have another save Volt Switch. If he decides to stay in and hit me, it won't do too much damage, and he'll be taking the Toxic plus the Volt Switch, so I do just go for the Volt Switch as he actually switches into his Vaporeon. And even though all of these things are weak to Electric, I'm still not doing a ton because everything is really bulky, but it's not a huge deal. I do Volt Switch off on the Vaporeon, and I go back out into my Jelson. And here I am going to just click Taunt as he is going to protect. Uh, even if the Tornadus came in, that's fine because again, I have a very safe switch into my Zapdos. And here I really expected him to switch out because he already re I already revealed Taunt. He, his only attacking move is probably going to be Scald. So I really predicted him to either switch out into his Tornadus or go for like a Shadow Ball or whatever. Uh, but he goes for the Wish which is totally fine, um, because again, like, I can just keep switching around his team. I have responses to everything on his team at this point. So I do have basically a free Volt Switch here. Uh, this is where that crit is kind of important, because if he did not get crit, he could switch into a Tyranitar here, but because of the crit, he's too low, and he cannot take another Volt Switch, so... Um, he is going to go out into his Tornadus here as I go for the Volt Switch. Takes it relatively well. And after the Wish, it will bring him back to basically full HP. Uh, so as you can see here, Wish is going to come back, and he is brought to max HP. Uh, and then, of course, the toxic damage is going to rack up on him. And here is a pretty important part in the battle. I'm going to go for Fake Out, as he actually stays in. Now, uh, he's at range to die from a return. So I figured, okay, judging by that Fake Out damage, he's probably not physically defensive. Let's go for the return. And it does knock him out. And that Tornadus... Again, I could have switched around like my Zapdos and everything, but that Tornadus was a relatively big annoyance to my team. Now he's going to send out Infernape, and after switching it in on my low pony, I figured he's probably going to be Scarfed. Uh, he wouldn't want to take a return. I'm pretty sure it just Okos him. He goes for the close combat and then hard switches out. Because he revealed U-turn earlier, I'm pretty sure now he's definitely Scarfed because he did not U-turn out on my gels and he just hard switched. Here I'm going to click Taunt on the incoming Vaporeon. I didn't want to click Skull because I didn't want to give the same HP, but I do click Taunt on the incoming Vaporeon. And now that his Tornadus is down, uh, he has nothing that wants to take a Toxic. Not that Tornadus wanted to, but it was already Toxic, so he could have switched in on Toxic. But now he has nothing to switch in on another Toxic. So I am going to go for the Toxic, and something I want to explain here, uh, as you can see, he went for Skull. Uh, Wan at this point had to, I think, take care of something in, like, at his job, I believe, because he was doing this at, like, his job, because he has a lot of free time at his job. Uh, so I basically just had to kind of stall out the timer at this point. So you're going to see some plays that look weird, but again, it was me basically. I was just running down the timer, and he was uh, taking care of his thing, and then he'll be back after a couple turns. So I click Toxic again. Uh, he clicks Scald again. Honestly, Toxic probably would have been my play anyway, because this Vaporeon has revealed that it absolutely cannot touch me. So I would have just kept clicking Toxic until he eventually switched out. So... Again, I wait for the timer to go all the way down, and I actually, because I missed the uh, the timer, uh, right, cause, just because I was like slowing down the timer, I was like looking away, not paying attention at the point, I missed the taunt ending, so uh, he gets to throw up a wish, and this match is going to take even longer, <laughs> but uh, it's fine. This is a relatively long match, I believe it ended up in like 64 turns, so uh, I do apologize for that, but we'll get to the end of it relatively soon. He is going to switch out into his Togetic, which is totally fine, because I am going to hit this thing with the Scald. I do predict the switch out, and I went for the Scald because I don't care if I give the Vaporeon health at this point. I'm going to wear it down eventually anyway, and I couldn't allow him to go out into his um, into his Tyranitar, because I wanted to keep that thing low. And if he switched out into my Scald, he would have been dead at that point. So here, knowing he's going to get taunted, Juan just goes for the Dazzling thing with the Togetic. There's absolutely nothing to gels, and it's very bulky. And here, I'm going to hit this thing with Toxic. So, again, you're seeing some kind of, like, Toxic Stall, but Jellison is doing exactly what I wanted it to. It is completely shutting down his bulk. Togetic can do absolutely nothing to me. Vaporeon cannot touch me, literally cannot touch me, because the only attacking move at this point is Skull. So, I am... Uh, I'm in a very good spot here. He can't really switch anything into Jellison too, super safely, because Tyranitar will go down to a Skull. Uh, Infernape will take a lot from the Scald. He doesn't have too much to deal with it. And here I click Scald, uh, hoping he'd stay in. 
maybe a mistake on my part, but again, it doesn't really matter because the Vaporeon can't touch me and it's gonna get worn down anyway. Any health I give it back by him making a good prediction and clicking solve is just going to get taken away by the toxic damage eventually. So, again, it's still a very good position for me. Here, I am just going to click Taunt again. I have no reason to overpredict as he does, uh, hoping to catch me on an overprediction, he does try and go for the wish. Which, again, totally fine because he cannot do anything to me. Now, here I believe, uh, not that I'm getting impatient, but I want to speed up this game a little bit. So I believe here, yeah, here, I pulled the switch out into my Zapdos. I didn't think he'd go for Scald on my, on my, uh, Jellison. So I do go right out into my Zapdos as he also pulls the switch, I believe, out into his Togetic, which is totally fine. Uh, nope, he actually goes out into his Infernape. Not 100% sure what he was predicting there, but he does pull the switch into Infernape. I wanted to keep this thing healthy. I'm specially defensive, not physically defensive, so I don't want to take potentially a Stone Edge, even a Flare Blitz, as he does go for the Flare Blitz, which is fine, because Jellison can take this very easily, especially because he's not banded. And, and then he burns. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he gets the burn, which is not a huge deal. 10% chance it happens. And, again, because the Vaporeon Togetic can't touch me, I will be able to recover up on them. There's no, there's nothing now that can easily 2-a-KO me still. Um, although this Infernape could 2-a-KO me with Thunder Punch, and we'll see how that plays out later, but either way, uh, I am just going to click Recover here. If he goes Vaporeon, uh, it's, I'm getting my health back. If he stays in, uh, he'll be hurting himself, and I'll get my health back. So Recover was just my best play overall. Didn't want to click Scald on the Vaporeon switch in either. Uh, so yeah, that is that. Um, once again, I am just going to click Taunt. This is, it's going to be a very repetitive match, and I do apologize for that, but I have a very simple way to win, and that is just to taunt the bulky things and stop him from doing other things. So again, I am just going to click Taunt. As I'm not entirely sure what he's going to go for here. Like, you don't usually see an Infernape switch in on a Jelson. I figure he has Thunder Punch, because that's the only thing he can use to 2 a KO me. A Grass Knock does not 2 a KO me. So... I decide to switch out. I don't want him to double back into his before on getting health back, because even though I can deal with it then, it's just going to take even longer. So I switch out into my Zapdos, predicting either a Thunder Punch or a U-Turn, trying to gain momentum. If he does go for the Thunder Punch, I can take two of them. Uh, he is going to stay in and click another Thunder Punch, but again, I do live it, and I am able to get off the Roost, getting, bringing my Zapdos to a very nice amount of HP. Now, at this point, I figure he's not going to want to stay in. He does kind of need this Infernape uh, for certain Pokemon on my team. So I do go for the Volt Switch here as he brings out his Vaporeon once again. And this is pretty much the end of Vaporeon. It will be able to take the Volt Switch because Vaporeon just stupid bulky. But after the toxic damage and after the damage is previously taken and after the Volt Switch, it will not be able to take a hit from my low Lopunny. So I am going to send in my low Lopunny. I have no reason to click Fake out here. A return is guaranteed to kill and I obviously have speed this thing. So I am go just going to click return in case he decides to go out into Togetic, I get a little bit more damage off there. I am going to go for the return, and down goes the Vaporeon. So finally, after quite a while, another Pokemon is going to go down. Now, he is going to send out his Togetic here, and I have to switch out. I would like to keep my Lopunny around, uh, potentially dealing with that Mega Tyranitar. So I'm going to pull the switch out into Zapdos as he goes for the Dazzling Gleam. I'm not sure what other moves this thing had. I know it had Defog, Roost, Dazzling Gleam. I'm not sure what the third move was. Um, but anyway, he is going to go for the Dazzling Gleam. I am going to go for the Volt Switch again, because he does not have an immunity. It'll do a lot of damage to this thing, as he decides to hard switch out into his Infernape. Uh, nope, I am actually going to go for the Roost. Okay, my apologies. Um, I guess I should have gone for Volt Switch there, because I didn't need my Zapdos necessarily healthy at this point, but I did just do that. And now I'm going to hard switch out into my Jellison, as he makes a very good prediction, goes for the Thunder Punch, which because of the burn previously and the previous damage that was done to it, I will be 2 a KO'd. I believe it was not a 2 a KO, unless he was like an Adamant Scarf, but uh, I am going to be 2 a KO'd. Now, regardless, it doesn't matter too much. I don't need my Jellison at this point. The Vaporeon's gone. I don't need to taunt that anymore. I have uh, several other things on my team that deal with the Togetic, so I don't really need Jellison at this point. Now, however, I am going to go out into my Reuniclus, as he is pretty much forced to switch out. And my best play, I believe I go for the Combine here. 
Uh, let's see. Yes, I do go for the Combine here. I pretty much just win the game with Reuniclus as long as I hit a Focus Blast on the Tyranitar. I set up all over the Togetic. Uh, if he does not have Encore, as we'll see here, uh, if he reveals Encore here, then I'm kind of forced to switch out. If he does not have Encore, then I just set up and can win the game. He goes for Dazzling Gleam, meaning he does not have Encore, meaning I can just set up in this thing's face. I can set up on the Infernape because I am physically defensive, and that's pretty much going to lead to the end of the game, as long as they hit a Focus Blast on the Tyranitar. I do have other things to do with the Tyranitar, but in order to give Reuniclus more kills, in order to uh, preserve Differential, I need to hit that Focus Blast. So. Uh, he's going to roost. I'm going to go for the recovery here. Probably should have just went for a combine, but I think my thought process was I wanted to make sure that if he did switch out into Tyranitar, I had enough health to take that plus a Flare Blitz from Inferni. Um, here he is going to switch his Togetic out into his Infernape, trying to potentially to a KO me, but you guys will see in a second that I am able to take this hit extremely well because Reuniclus is just so bulky. Um, no matter what he goes for, if he goes for Flare Blitz, I will be able to recover off the damage and he'll be killing himself. If he goes for U-Turn, I'll be able to take it just fine. He does go for the U-Turn. I did just click Recover, as you guys will see in one second. I believe I click Recover. Uh, did I click Recover? Click Recover. No, I clicked Psy Shock. Uh, probably should have clicked Recover there in case he went for the Flare Blitz, but not a huge deal. Even if he did go for Flare Blitz, I would have lived that plus a Crunch from the Tyranitar with the Colder Berry. So it didn't matter too much in the end. Um, he is going to hit me with the Dazzling Gleam. I am just going to recover off all this damage. Or recover off all that damage, rather. Get myself back to full HP. And I could let the Toxic kill this thing and just go for another Combine or whatever. But I guess I get a little bit selfish. I kind of want to give the kill to Reuniclus this time. Even though Jellison did absolutely beautiful work. I do want to give the kill to Reuniclus. And the Togetic is going to go down to the Psy Shock. And now... He is left with his Infernape and his uh, Mega Tyranitar. Here, he is going to go for a Flare Blitz. Now, my best play is clicking Recover, just because I want to see what he locks himself into. He is going to go for the Flare Blitz, does about 50%, a little bit less, and I am able to recover off basically all of that damage and bring myself to near full. Now, <laughs> at this point, I know I can take a Flare Blitz plus a Crunch with the Clover Berry, as I've stated previously. So I am just going to go for a Psy Shock to try and take out the Infernate, but he does pull the switch into his Mega Tyranitar, meaning I now have to hit a Focus Blast in order to give Reuniclus the rest of the kills. Crunch goes off, and look at this, this is an adamant Mega Tyranitar, and I know I have the Culver Berry to help, but look at this damage, that is nothing. I am, that is a super effective stab adamant crunch from a Mega Tyranitar, but anyway, I thankfully am able to connect my Focus Blast, meaning that now... Barring his Infernape being able to crit me, I win the game 100% with Reuniclus. He can't lock himself into Flare Blitz because I have my Tyranitar left. He can't lock himself into potentially Stone Edge because I have my Mega Low Bunny left. Can't lock himself into a Fighting Move because it won't kill me. He locks himself into U-Turn. I take it, and I am going to be able to knock out the Infernape with the plus 2 Psy Shock. And that is going to be a very long, but 4-0 victory in my favor against Juan and the Amityville Haunters. Uh, this was this was a solid game. Uh, it was relatively tedious. Of course, it was like 64 turns or whatever it was. Uh, it did take a while to do it. This is probably the bulkiest team I've ever built for a league match, but it worked out absolutely perfectly. Pretty much everything did its job. Uh, Nidoqueen was supposed to keep Rocks up, but it couldn't, obviously. And he didn't bring a Mega, a Dragon Dance Tyranitar. That was what Nidoqueen was there for. Uh, he didn't bring. He just brought an Adamant three attacks to protect one, which is actually pretty cool. Um, so I didn't need Nidoqueen quite as much. I had other things to deal with the Togetic and other things to deal with the Infernape, so pretty much Nidoqueen's job was just weaken the Tyranitar, and it did just that. Uh, the Zapdos switched in perfectly to the Tornadus. The Low Pony cleaned up things that were weakened. Uh, the Tyranitar, Pursuit Trap, the Latias, pretty much everything that I wanted to have happen happened. I got rid of the things that were stopping my Reuniclus, and it set up in one at the end, and then Jellison just shut down his bolt altogether, so... I feel like I prepped very, very well for this match. Uh, thank you guys very much for watching. Uh, good game to you, Juan. Uh, please, like I said, check out his channel in the description below. Check out the PPL Twitter, check out the PPL YouTube, and have a nice day, everyone.